Hi everybody, welcome to the episode 4 of Luxury Living. Luxury Living with Ram Ratan Group. Just to brief you, we started in 2021 uh, during the lockdown time and we got so popular because uh, we had a lot of our media, radio partners who stood with us. Now, in 2024, we have started another journey of these chat shows with entrepreneurs, h and clients, MSMEs, corporate women, uh, everybody who we look forward to, everybody who we feel would be a value add to our viewers who have joined us from Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and YouTube. Not only this, today we have somebody very special, somebody who already has his association with Ram Radhan Group. Let me just brief you about him. Today we have Mr. Sahil Garg, a seasoned lawyer. Hailing from Chandigarh, but flourishing in Delhi. Legal scene for over a decade. With a background in corporate and commercial laws, Mr. Garg specializes in contractual dispute resolution, arbitration, and much more. Not just a legal expert, he also has a visionary investment with Ram Ratan Group. So, let's welcome, without wasting any further time, let's welcome Sahil. Yeah, hi, uh, thank you very much for uh, having invited me here. I'm overwhelmed to be here, right? Thank you so much, Sahil, for joining in uh, with us. We do this chat show uh, to have an insightful conversation for our viewers who have joined us from varied platforms. And you might also be expecting a few questions from them. That's completely fine. I'll be more than uh, glad to answer any of them. All right. To right. start with, could you share with us your journey from Chandigarh to Delhi? and how it has influenced your career as a lawyer? Uh, so predominantly, it, I'll not call it my journey. I'll call it the journey of my family because uh, I think in the early years, uh, my father, he decided to migrate to Delhi. Uh, my Both my parents, they hail from uh, Punjab. My mother is from Chandigarh and my father is from Sangroor in, uh, that's like a, a native village in Punjab. So uh, after he got uh, selected for Delhi Judicial Services, he opted to uh, migrate to Delhi and join Delhi Judiciary as a judicial officer. So that is when uh, he decided to move to Delhi and my fate brought me to Delhi. And uh, luckily, if I may call it so, because today I got the opportunity to work as a, an advocate in Delhi. Uh, I have seen the compared the practices in Delhi and Chandigarh. So Delhi being the economic, a major economic zone and, and a litigation hub, uh, I think uh, what place better than a lawyer to be in Delhi and uh, having gotten the opportunity to work here. Absolutely. Uh, right. Nothing like Delhi, as it says, because right. I myself is a Delhiite. Right. Thank God you are not a Mumbaiite. Otherwise, you think I, we wouldn't have been sharing that thought. No, I, it would have been Mumbai versus Delhi. Right, All my right. Mumbai friends does that. Right. I did my uh, college from Pune, Bharti with the Pete. And uh, so I, I usually face that uh, brunt with the, you know, localites that uh, they always have this so-called tussle between the Mumbai uh, people and the Delhi people. Right. Ask right. It. So, um, talking about, you know, your spe specialization, mm -hmm. rightly right. said, because as I was reading it through, uh, you have your specialization in contractual dispute resolution, arbitration and property matters. What inspired you to have uh, this side of the forte? So, uh, if I may answer that, uh, I had interest in law from the very early uh, part of my career, my father being a judicial officer in uh, Delhi. So, uh, we are two brothers, one of uh, the elder one of uh, the brother, he is into IT, more into technology and everything. So, I being the younger one had much options uh, in the initial years, but l later on when I realized it's a very good, good career opportunity to pursue. And uh, coming to the niche of contractual dispute, I'll say, uh, that uh, that impression which everyone has in our country of Tariq Pe Tariq that uh, actually is taken away by the alternate dispute resolution, especially by arbitration. Why? Because uh, in date mein jitne aapke big corporates, hai, these big companies, they are not looking to fight over 10 years or 15 years or two decades in a court. Their entire work uh, is uh, focused on an expeditious disposal of the disputes inter se between them. So ADR probably is a very good platform because... Uh, uh, nowadays, arbitration is, I think, uh, the talk of the town. Every every big company uh, gets the resolution of their dispute through arbitration. So, uh, as luck would have it, I graduated in 2014 and there were major uh, amendments in the arbitration law in 2015. And then the 
IBC, the Insolvency Bankruptcy Court, came in in the year 2016. So I got the opportunity to have a first-hand experience on on the new laws given the MSME advent as well. So I a major part of my litigation also deals with the MSMEs. So as you mentioned in the very inception that you have been inviting MSMEs. So yes. the, the, the lawyers we run through the entire genre you mentioned. So uh, right. So. As of today, uh, it is a very uh, it is a very good niche being developed here, and uh, right, and uh, the flavor which the contractual dispute and arbitration provide is very very different from the uh, other litigation which we see. And given the property dispute, being in Delhi, working as a lawyer, you can't stay away or choose uh, to stay away from litigation of property. Every other house has a dispute somehow or the other related to a property. So right. We already have our viewers joining in and uh, complimenting you, Sahil. And I think we have got a perfect blend because, of course, my industry is all about glamour and glitter, and that's how mm -hmm. the background states. Your right. industry is more about what is being stated behind you, which are books and all lawyer-related things. You know, to be to be very honest, uh, this is just the uh, interior. <laughs> uh, we we need to keep them, but yeah, now we are in 2024. After post-COVID, we have seen a digitization. So I hardly don't recall when I actually opened a physical book and, you know, actually read a, a judgment or something. We are all all techies now and uh, we, we usually right, do that. Absolutely. So how do you see the real estate landscape <clears throat> evolving in Delhi, especially in terms of legal challenges and opportunities? Right. So uh, if I uh, can comment on that, although not a legal uh, or not, not a real estate expert in Delhi, I would say now I think uh, seeing people from... Uh, all chores, uh, everyone is into uh, property. After COVID, I think that uh, uh, predominant thinking, the orthodox thinking of not spending much has uh, gradually changed. Everyone wants to now, no one is shying away from uh, shelling out money from their pocket and everyone is actually shifting to the luxury living. And uh, given the farm front, I think uh, now if I may uh, tell you that uh, there is a master plan of Delhi 2021, which provides that if you have one acre of land, then that can be converted and used into a farmhouse. When before that, there was a, the minimum threshold was the 2.5 acre of land. So that is yet to be notified. But I think once it is notified and a one acre land is permitted to be used as a farmhouse, that will be a major boon for the farmhouse community in Delhi. And the prices are uh, set to shoot up for at least uh, a double. Absolutely. Right. Um, another quite uh, technical question. As a legal expert, what are your views on the implementation of the insolvency and bankruptcy code of India? That would be a very uh, far-fetched uh, answer to give uh, on this chat show. But given the, uh, I, I limit it to the real estate front. Uh, on the real estate front, uh, the IBC came in uh, quite early in 2016. However, it was not well equipped to uh, take into account the real estate insolvencies as we are now seeing. Uh, starting from like JP Infratech in the year 2016-17. Amra Pali, now we are seeing super tech. So it wasn't geared up to actually cater into the real estate insolvencies, which we are now nowadays seeing. Uh, I read an article a few days back, uh, the NCLAT, uh, the NCLAT published that uh, I think around 21% of the insolvency as of today uh, are being uh, only the are being only these, these uh, real estate companies, big real estate chunk. So it is not equipped. However, it is being growing uh, gradually. Everyone is learning from uh, the what is happening around like for example the home buyers uh, who who are, who are in a lot in any of the project earlier they were not treated as a financial creditor financial creditor if i may uh, decipher it means like uh, there are two kind of uh, creditors in 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 ibc one for example i have rendered any work for a project i have uh, rendered some cement or i have done any other uh, maintenance work so i'll be treated as an operational creditor and uh, on the other front, if I have uh, rendered any financial facility or I have advanced any loan, I'll be a financial creditor. So the financial creditor is always on a higher footing and a secured creditor over an operational creditor. So now in 2018, by virtue of an amendment, the, fun the home allottees who have been given a plot or a flat or an allotment in any unit, they have been equated with the status of a financial creditor. So like now uh, a person who is going out to and buying and investing in a flat or any anywhere in a DLF or any other developer, he doesn't need to be you know skeptical about the uh, what what would happen with the investment. 
more so because he would be equated as a financial creditor and tomorrow if god forbid the company lands up into insolvency he would have a first charge on the assets of the uh, real estate uh, mehmoth right quite interesting and informative right. indeed um moving on from i think uh, law legal ki kafi baat ho gayi hai moving right. on to a lighter side so right. you know sahil from being a lawyer to also investing into ram ratan group how has been your association so far and what does luxury living define for you how does it define for you so uh, i'll say uh, खुद पर बीती पे कि आई एम इन माय अर्ली थर्टीज एंड यू नो लाइक एवरी अदर मिड थर्टीज आई सी माय फ्रेंड्स वी ऑल स्ट्राइव फॉर व्हाट अ स्टेबिलिटी सम स्टेबिलिटी इन लाइफ एट द सेम टाइम व्हाट वी वांट इज दैट वी डोंट कॉम्प्रोमाइज ऑन द वीकेंड गेटवेज एंड यू नो वी आर एबल टू वेंट आउट द इंटायर वीक्स वर्क एंड वी आर बैक ऑन द ट्रैक सो माय एसोसिएशन विद राम रतन ग्रुप इज लाइक फोर फाइव ईयर ओल्ड हाउ एवर माय फादर ही वॉज इन डेली since major part of his life so he had some association with them so i carried the trend i i had uh, uh, met ram ratan group on umteen occasion but the main forte i think uh, where they stand out from other developers and everyone is the personal touch uh, so i think uh, they take their work too seriously and what i like about uh, ram ratan group is that they are not running here and there like everyone like today if their work is working uh, they they are not saying that we'll build flats and we'll do this from time immemorial if i may call three decades they are only into farm houses and uh, now they are nurturing their uh, business into luxury living right right so i think right mr vijay chaudhary he is the morgan uh, uh, you know upfront to meet personally i i have invested in one or two projects of his so he is not the one like uh, with other developers the case is that you know you it, it is all rosy picture in the beginning and thereafter uh, when it actually comes to delivery then uh, either there is no site or the plans are you know all tentative but with mr vijay i i got what i was committed in the first place and uh, i really thoroughly enjoyed my journey with him so far and as i uh, at the cost of reputation i'll say I, in my early 30s we don't really have a second chance on a failure in investment so uh, we always want the first shot to be a sixer or a you know That's out it. of the park shot right so uh, mr vijay That's made it happen for me at least uh, because i get a uh, you know uh, it it uh, it serves two purposes for me one from the investment front i i made it an sip with him like instead of uh, an sip in mutual funds i invest in land and uh, in the vision he i share with him and uh, right and uh, at the same front we have a luxury uh, home upcoming in the one of his project where we can uh, rush to every weekend because now the connectivity thanks to nhi uh, i i can write uh, it takes me one hour from delhi to gurgaon and i think in in an hour and a half i'll be at my farm so in 2024 with the connectivity and the vision uh, ram ratan group offers i think my journey so far has been amazing and i thoroughly would recommend uh, associating with ram ratan group although subject to all the caveats right so the two things which you mentioned i totally agree because i am also being associated as a brand ambassador for over 4 years for a half years and right. um, something which uh, when i am in meetings and there are a lot of people from diverse uh, backgrounds who say that you know the usp is luxury living farm houses communities like who does it want to run away from the urban chaos i think no one would want to stay back in delhi over a weekend why because yes. it's uh, the financial capital as well as the pollution capital so no one right. wants to like, after right. i think after lockdown uh, things have really evolved yeah, and right, people right. like us who are in 20s and 30s they actually understand the nitigrities of going away from the things which you have mentioned going away from the pollution going away from and having a, a you know peaceful place where you can just sit down and relax that's very very important so you can go away from right i think everyone uh, i think uh, strives for that that uh, if he is able to you know uh, spend some peaceful time in in a midst of nature why would anyone mind that so uh, with with ram ratan group i think we are getting that opportunity and we are actually able to uh, realize that why because today i can't just uh, drive for 5 or 6 hours and go to a farmhouse and because we don't have that long weekends there uh, again uh, the monday blues come in on a sunday evening so we the only place we can go is a one minute half hour or maximum two hour of that right right back in town for the next week 
So I think for now, uh, for each one to himself, for me, that works. Yes. So, uh, you know, stepping into the fourth episode with you, Sadal, uh, with for this luxury living, there are a lot of people who keep asking, what are the key considerations of investing into farmlands or farmhouses or mm -hmm. uh, going towards it? What is your take on that? My take would be that there are a lot of myths around farmhouses, which which we we are uh, circumscribed today. Because uh, I, as an investor, barring the Ram Ratan Group, if I go out today as an investor and I want to invest in a farmhouse colony, there are no such developers uh, around who are reputed and dealing into farmhouses. Rather, it is the other way around. Every other third person is selling farmlands with no certainty as to what will happen, what are the title document, whether a commercial land user is permitted or not. So there is a lot of uh, un no, uh, clarity. There is no clarity at all as to what the exact nature of the land I'm purchasing it. Is it an agricultural land? Will I be able to build on that land? Where exactly is the land situated? Because the land dealings are particularly into uh, revenue uh, terminologies, if I may term it, khasras, girdavaris, and khatonis, which a normal layman is not able to understand. So that, uh, for example, for a big chunk of land, there is a simple single khasra, but uh, that khasra might be of a five acre or a 10 acre land. So you need you, the people, a layman is not equipped to know as to what particular area of the land is being purchased by him, whether there is a demarcation done by the revenue estate for that particular chunk of land. So these are the areas which um, people use to, you know, fraudulently make commitments all across the uh, country to say that we are uh, selling you this when they actually land up paying that money and eventually they are getting nothing. So for with Ram Ratan, I think uh, we particularly are, uh, you know, very safe for that particular purpose because they are venturing into farmlands in particular. And, uh, they say, right. bolde hai ki, you know, uh, for any real estate investment, you need to have your documents uh, quite like a foolproof thing. But then uh, talking about the various fraudulent activities which happens in real right. estate, uh, absolutely right on point. Or ab jaisa bola jata hai, luxury living is, living is also simple living. Achha luxury no living is simple achha. living, but uh, jitna dekhne mein lagta hai, aapko executing that is a, 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 a humongous task. Why? Because in today's date, I can have a thought that I want to go out tomorrow and buy a farmland. But you, when you actually go out in the market hunting for a farmland, that is the biggest challenge you face. You don't know what actually you are getting into. I myself as a lawyer, uh, uh, you know, uh, keep my foot after uh, uh, verifying 200 things. And so I, I really don't know what a layman would land up into uh, uh, if he wants to, uh, you know, venture into farmlands. Isi sadhi pe, uh, there's a small video which we would like uh, the production team to please play. Raah ke kinare pe ped ki chhau me baith jamo saafir kabe. Itna kyu hai bhagta? Kya tu vakt se vada ban gaya hai kafir abe. राह के किनारे पे पेड़ की छाव में बैठ जा मुसाफिर कभी इतना क्यों है भागता क्या तू राइट यू एक्चुअली टू टू इट देयर इन द ग्रीन जोन ऑफ वीकेंड्स थैंक यू वेरी मच राइट एंड दैट टू वन वर्किंग रो राइट सूटिंग टू द आईज आल्सो दो बट यस Today, today we I I couldn't uh, actually go up there, but otherwise we had a plan. Like now, uh, uh, like uh, in the vicinity of NCR, we have many farms. So we all prefer and I think strive for that. That weekends uh, should be away from the hush hush of the city and uh, away in the greens. Same right. here, same here. I mean, uh, bang on, uh, right? Main jitni baatein main jitni synonym choose karlo, wo bhi kam honge because. While talking or looking at this uh, beautiful video, it really takes you away from your uh, mm -hmm. offices, your the things which you are doing in your day-to-day uh, -day course. Right. Just two more questions before we move on to the rapid fire round. Sure. What are your thoughts on the role of technology and digital platforms? You have, you know that every like you were also mentioning that you know that uh, now everything is on phone, everything is on your mm -hmm. back, everything you can just Google it out and uh, take care of. So. What is the role specifically in transforming the legal and the real estate sector since you are part of both now? 
uh, as we talk you know we we are making it happen right right across we talk we are sitting in the comfort of your place and i am sitting here it's only technology that is connecting us to yeah. every one of uh, the people the viewers uh, who are here with us so technology has a is being a major game changer in the litigation uh, field at least after the covid pandemic why because now uh, uh, the supreme court has ensured that uh, there is a digitized record for every matter we have now there is a digital virtual hearing hybrid hearing permitted for every matter for every court so today if i um, am sitting in delhi i can argue a case in ahmedabad or i say chandigarh or wherever so that not only is uh, environmentally uh, friendly and uh, you know uh, that makes uh, that is like, like uh, building opportunities for everyone and for the real estate sector i myself tried using magic uh, was uh, using magic bricks one day for uh, scouting a property it actually took me to a virtual tour of a property and i was uh, taken by shock to see that what technology can do without going there physically and without uh, visiting the site uh, from my own eyes i could uh, actually make out what is being offered on magic bricks and uh, whether or not i want to venture into that property for that matter today if you go on a google map uh, and you to type any property technology would uh, take you directly to the road outside the property and you you can have a first eye first view of the area surrounding it i think uh, technology has been a major game changer and it will continue to be so so now that the culture of work from home is also very you know uh, now in the uh, being practiced everywhere but you can't be here because uh, when you when i asked my employees to come, come back and join in so right uh, even the in the new inter, i mean the interviews which we take for the new hires they also say that uh, can it be two days work from home or three days because, work from home? it's saving time for everyone in the, and uh, i don't not need to uh, go everywhere and sitting here i can conduct like every five interviews rather than a physical challenge of two and uh, i we just want to transform it to uh, work from farm now from work from home so that uh, uh, on a lighter day we can get an extended weekend if we have a lighter day in court my yes. friends actually do that because they own a uh, farmhouse uh, with ram right. group and they do work from there uh, especially for the ones who are in senior positions uh, right. director level and what they do is they work from farm and uh, while right. nobody gets to know about it so that's how that's how things are changing and things are evolving with time no, moving no, right. on to the last question yes. uh, Sahil, before uh, we move on to our favorite our viewers favorite rapid fire round as a second generation lawyer what advice would you give to young legal professionals aspiring to specialize in real estate law or any related fields yeah, i would say you should know what you are getting into uh, you should do your homework well and uh, there is an interplay into like uh, you can't there is nothing called a real estate law because once you get into it you will actually come to know that there are 20 other laws which it is interlinked with so uh, you need to be on the top of it if you want to be there uh it is either all in or it is nothing so there is nothing called a 9 to 5 job in a litigation real estate or whatever whatever law you may talk about so either you venture into it with full heart and soul or don't touch it at all absolutely right. um i think i am excited uh, now we move on to the rapid fire questions and then at the end we'll take few of the viewers right. uh, questions which have been showcased showcased <clears throat> by the production team Now rapid fire questions. After they come, guys, I'll. It means that you need to answer quickly. I mean, I'll throw the question. You need to answer first thing which comes to your mind. Right. I'll do every interview. Okay, बहुत easy questions रखे हैं, I promise. Uh, और बहुत right. दिल कुछ भी ऐसे टेनी मेने तिगड़ों नहीं बैठाए हैं. We have made sure that we are. Definitely, I'll, 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 I'll try my best. Perfect. So uh, the first question. First word which comes to your mind for Mr. Vijay Chaudhary, Chairman Ramratan Group. But wait. Let me give you uh, maybe few seconds to ponder it over since we have a small video by him. Right. Thank you. I can now uh, you know uh, come back with a. One farm for life. One farm for happiness. And one farm for a better life. For life. Ramatan Group. With Ramatan Group. With us. right uh, so i'll not call it a word i'll call it a sentence which he always says yahi samay hai sahi samay so i think uh, earlier I, i i used to take it on a lighter note but uh, after investing with ram ratan group i actually realized the real reason behind the tag line 
that um, this is actually the right time to you know invest in the farmlands and and any other property for that matter not only farmlands anywhere in the real estate because now country we are a developing country and the entire country the real estate sector in particular is seeing a boom so uh, right this is the time and now is the time so you should go out and you know invest one word to describe your legal practice time har kisi ka ek style hota hai aapka kya style hai Yeah, I would say aggressive. Aggressive. Okay. Biggest legal challenge you have faced in the property dispute? Legal challenge in a property dispute is to ascertain the real owner because we don't know uh, how many times the property has changed hands. We never get to know who actually is the real owner on uh, paper. We have seen matters wherein you know uh, there are twenty agreements for the same property and. we uh, we don't get to know actually who actually is the real owner on the record of the uh, revenue okay preferred mode of relaxation reading or traveling or oh, reading is the work thing so obviously traveling uh, top advice for first time real estate investors uh to do their homework before investing not just okay. jump into anything and everything favorite aspect of farm living uh living close to nature interesting uh any interesting or unique case you have handled in arbitration which you would like our viewers to know uh, every every case is interesting in some way or the other but uh, if i can uh, name a few uh, i think i started my career myself with a real estate company called bptp they are a big developer into real estate working in faridabad and gurgaon so i after my i did my masters in uh, corporate and commercial laws i got my first placement in bptp limited in gurgaon so i did work there for a uh, 3 to 4 months where after i realized that my place to me at least is uh, in court and not in an office so i left that place and uh, ventured into the era of litigation and 3 uh, 4 years uh, back uh, i got a chance to actually fight a litigation against bptp and against the same management i used to work with so uh, we came back victorious so yeah that that, that that's all about time where uh, we we were uh, 10 years back and where we are fighting against the same organization and coming victorious in an arbitration right right best thing about being a lawyer in delhi uh delhi has uh, very deep pockets so so right uh, apart from the monet- monetary aspect i think uh, delhi has like, everything to offer why because we have the high court here we have the supreme court here almost every appellate uh, tribunal uh, across the country is situated in delhi be it nclat be it income tax appellate tribunal ncdrc so we are uh, full of courts and uh, work is never uh, less in delhi so as a lawyer uh, we are best to be in delhi conferences or online courses what is your pre- uh, preferred method right uh, in today's era i would say online because everything is now digitally uh, readily available now there are legal platforms like live law bar and bench which make uh, information legal information available to you like in a jiffy so yes digital the last rapid fire question uh, favorite feature or aspect of a luxury farmhouse what is your luxury, favorite feature of a luxury farmhouse i would call a home away from home uh centered in nature a home away from home if i am able to get that then i think that's the most uh important feature i would look into a luxury farm I and that is the luxury. feature of my urge uh, to actually go out every other week to you know went out and come back to work right very rightly answered i think next time some rapid fire mein na kuch uh uh tere questions bhi hone chahiye because these were totally on point and though because of course uh, with the high regards uh, which ramathan group uh, rich i am losing you i think there is a patchy network uh. is it better yeah yeah it's better please yeah. um moving on let's uh, have some questions from our viewers who have been right. waiting all uh, this 30 minutes uh, chat show uh, let me ask the production team to please display the first question which so nikhil has said that what are some common misconceptions people have have about legal profession and how do you address them i that's a you know a very omnibus question to ask i can't really say what misconception what has for a legal profession but yes i can only say back in the day uh, back in the days my father used to tell me that jo bacche kuch nahi karte hain unko law mein dal dete hain which uh, 
uh, which I think uh, is now uh, not the correct situation. Now it's it's becoming a very good profession and being uh, recognized uh, worldwide. And now with the opportunities we have all across the country into arbitrations, into IBC give come uh, of the from the MSME sectors. So I think it's a very leading profession to be into. But having said that, uh, each one to himself. <laughs> Everyone should uh, choose the career wisely. My father used to say, and when I was of course doing my MBA, my father used to say that, uh, you know, I want to become a lawyer. Because I have great negotiation skills. I'm good with uh, keeping my point right and just uh, up front. I, I, I wish actually... that was the only consideration required. Uh, but yes, uh, right. Well, had, it, had it been, then um, I think Delhi has like everything to offer. Yeah, but then I chose what I love and I though of course uh, you know uh, education there's no end there's more and more which you get as and when you learn or study so we have Ashish who says how do you get clarity to invest in farm versus investing in any of the other platforms now, as I mentioned Ashish earlier that uh, getting into farmhouses is a different story altogether than uh, getting into any other thing for example if you are uh, wanting to buy a flat or some commercial space for yourself for a rental and venturing into a farmhouse, it's a completely different ball game. Uh, if you want to get clarity, I think uh, uh, you shouldn't uh, venture into any of the farm investment without uh, getting a legal advice up front. Why? Because uh, nowadays, um, what we are seeing regularly in courts is like that uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, litigation uh, started that bet uh, between the parties owing to the clarity of the land particularly the identification of the land and the title in the possession. So I would say that um, only and only go with reputed builders. I wouldn't recommend any, but uh, you should always uh, try and uh, find peace in someone who has a good unblemished uh, reputation across the uh, real estate sector and who is a renowned name in the real estate sector for farmhouses. So don't just go with a new person and try and go with someone who has a good reputation in it. Ashish, go with the legacy and uh, yeah. that what it really matters because right. at the end, you need to be sure about where you're investing. Right. Um, the next question is by Ria. She says, hi, sir. It would be really great to know what initially sparked your interest in pursuing law as a career. Uh, as I said, I uh, I'm a second generation uh, legal personnel in the house. As my father had, uh, you know, he 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 became a judge in Delhi, and uh, I, I you know I really fancied it uh, seeing him as we see it in movies. Uh, so ranging from seeing him in uh, this uh, legal profession in movies and seeing my father actually strive for uh, justice in uh, you know working as such, I really developed uh, a keen interest in uh, litigation. Earlier, I wanted to be a judicial officer, but uh, uh, seeing the nitty gritties and the you know uh, how the contractual flavors are there of the nuances of law, I thereafter wanted to pursue my career into advocacy. Science, if not law, because questions are laga, I have to If not law, what do you think you would be doing? I think uh, if not law, I uh, I can't answer that offhand, but I think uh, I. I, I would have been in Germany uh, or somewhere or, uh, you know, I am very passionate about cars or I must be into, you know, I would have been there uh, learning a professional uh, driving course or doing something with it. If I could actually do with my career. So, so maybe, I don't know. Um, the next question is by Avantika. Why did you choose land instead of SIPs? You are already doing land as SIPs. I am, I am doing SIPs. I am into mutual funds. I am into equity. But I said is that uh, nowadays, uh, given the advent of the farmlands community and uh, given the benefit it is giving to me, the twofold benefit, one on the financial front, uh, the other on the weekend gateway, I am now decided to you know spend a particular part of my income uh, and invest it systematically, uh, periodically into uh, farmlands. Not... Uh, everything of uh, my corpus goes into farmland, but I make it a habit that uh, uh, in the form of an SIP, I'm in, I'm a constant investor in farmlands. Okay, thank you for your answer to that, Sahil. Uh, last question, if we have, uh, we can take it up. Okay, uh, Medha asked that what motivated you to specialize in contractual dispute resolution 
arbitration and other specific i think it was similar to what i asked but looks right. like uh, but then just to answer her because maybe she has joined us later part of the show yeah right medha to answer that uh, as i mentioned in the earlier uh, time that uh, uh, contractual and arbitration disputes have a different flavor altogether given the normal ordinary litigation which goes on for years and years and uh, the typical dialogue of the movie damini tarik pe tarik and uh, this actually has a logical conclusion to a uh, dispute between the parties and today uh, all big companies uh, be it whichever company or even big, big groups everyone is uh, resorting to arbitration as an alternate dispute resolution so this is a very uh, niche uh, which uh, i think not only me uh, most of the uh, lawyers in there uh, have have been pursuing and uh, i think it's turning out well for uh, this particular area of specialization तारीख पे तारीख अभी भी पड़ती है मतलब ऐसा नहीं है दैट हर चीज मतलब बिकॉज़ आई एम टोटली विद यू दैट इज द केस बट दैट इज हाउ समथिंग पेस आवर बिल्स ऑन अ लाइटर नोट राइट सो प्रोडक्शन टीम आर वी डन विद द क्वेश्चंस और व्हाट वी कैन डू इज साहिल जस्ट यू नो बिकॉज़ ऑफ कोर्स we have already crossed the timers it was a wonderful uh, way to chat with you mm-hmm. and Thank i can you. see the number of questions which are pouring in the number of compliments which are pouring in. people are really enjoying the youth talking or somebody who is you know a young generation lawyer are right in front of you so i we would request yeah. you to answer all of them once uh, yeah. we go offline because we have seen the pattern of people joining right uh, you know they um, see this chat show and then they ask the questions on that we have our chat show live on facebook instagram youtube and linkedin thodi si mehnat karwayenge hamare viewers after that we will be able to because, answer them on the right hand uh, you know because, because uh, everyone has clarity before investing into anything so if i could be of any use to anyone that is uh, it will be my pleasure but the good part is you know talking so technical yet people are showing interest in terms of understanding your side of your life which is legal as well as real estate and how you have been able to manage uh, that well that's what this luxury living is all about getting people from across genres across age groups coming forward especially talking about and uh, things which are we rightly mentioned any yes, last word sir i i think yes thank you very much for the opportunity for being you know actually uh, coming to the platform and uh, being able to pour my heart out on the real estate sector and uh, the farmers investment and i think kudos to the group to for enabling us to actually uh, you know being able to live that uh, dream as as of today and uh, yes we look forward to it Thank you so much for joining in. Here we are, luxury living by Ramnathan Group, and I'm your host, Rucha Mehta. We're gonna see you again next Saturday, 1:30 p.m. Thank you, so- Sahil, once again. I'm gonna Thank see you, you physically in the next meet, which you're gonna have with Ramnathan Group. Thank right. you so much. Looking forward. Thank you.